I will also show you uh, what happened to me in Long Island, which was a great show and all that. We'll call it the Hurt situation. I, I think Monty has seen me a couple times now lose my shit in a car. I think you see me lose my shit at least two or three times. Which yeah, this was different though. This was better. You, I, I said it to Sid as soon as you got out of the car. I've gone. I've never seen Jim get so New York so quickly. <laughs> It was the best. You, the way you walked over to the car, it was different. And I'm like, oh, he's got a, he's going back to his teenage roots where he used to <laughs> fight people at the ball game. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I'm not proud of this side of me. I'm really not proud of this side of me. It just tells me this still exists. Like, I can... I can be in Florida and get cut off and go off the road. And I'm like, hey, man, everyone has a tough day. You know, you weren't paying attention. It's all good. The minute. You're right. You having a, it, the, the psychedelics just kick in? Uh, having an episode. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the minute I get there, it's this angst. But. In due defense, we had, wasn't well, you agree there was a nice system going on there. We were far behind, and then each car would come in, and then all of a sudden, this van comes beating up one of the aisles, cuts in front of everyone, and goes tries to get right in front of the line. It was and, the selfishness that triggered all of us off because everyone was being uh, cordial in that zipper effect we were all doing it was like a zipper so one 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 everyone was going okay this is what we're doing we're all stuck everyone's been there for 40 minutes and then this one van comes up and thinks no i'm gonna push to the front of the line you know when someone on an airplane tries to push their way out and you just want to smash them in the face that's what the feeling was it's come on we know the rules play by them right and this is people in the van and I don't care who you are. You thought this out. You thought, you know what, I ain't dealing with this. I'm going to front. A lot of people will beat their horn. They, they might give me the finger. But in today's society, this is back to what I was talking about before. Everyone has become meek. Everyone has become, yeah, just let it happen. You know, that's the way it is. You get assholes. No. You gotta make a stand. The front, and I I contemplated for like twenty seconds. I went, now I don't know what happened. I get out of the car, Yosemite Sam, dun, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 and I lost my shit. I went, I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> you, you know, we've been waiting here for forty minutes. And you don't get to cut, and I'm I'm f bombing. You know, oh, fuck it, oh, fuck it. You gonna back your fucking car? You ain't. And they said something like, "I'm in a hurry." And I went, "Doctor's in a hurry. I'm in. A, we're all in a hurry." But you don't get. Who do you think you are that you get? The, and then there was a woman in the back. Now, here's the other little thing. They were all Hasidic Jews. <laughs> now, the reason I bring that up. Not because it's a slanter against Hasidic Jews. It's once I realized they were Hasidic Jews, I, I made a conscious decision. Like, do I continue? I'm like, you know what? I don't care if they're Jewish, if they're black, if they're, they're, they're I don't care what they are. I don't care if they're born again Christians. This is this, this, this has nothing against Hasidic Jews and, and their lifestyle and their beliefs. It has everything to do with these people in this car, no matter what they were, were assholes. And so many people get away with being assholes by the cover of, uh, no, no. You're an asshole, no matter what your outfit, no matter what your belief, whatever. Well, you're not an asshole. So this individual or individuals were assholes. So I and I said, you're being an asshole. And there was a woman in the back and she was like, excuse me. I went, excuse me. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to him, the driver. So 
Well, sure enough, they sped and they did a quick 360 turn. It was like, <laughs> and the coolest thing was immediately the car down one of the aisles rolled down his window and he went, Thank you. Thank you very much. And a couple other cars did. And I'm like, I think society is waiting for that. It, 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 we should be done with the assholes. Someone's got to start stepping up. I don't know why my hurts is getting, thing is turned into a world event now. But uh, the funniest, though, is you went into Hertz to go get help. Well, because they only had one booth going. There's four booths that could have been letting people out. And they had one guy working who looked like he <clears throat> was, you know, cleaning the toilets 20 minutes earlier. And they said, oh, Kenneth, go out and man the booth. He didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> and um, yeah, you could see him, like, shaking with the, as people were handing their thing. He's going, oh. <laughs> he was taking, what do you reckon, Famous. five, six minutes per car. I think we were counting something like that, right? At least because yeah. we were timing it. I'm like, all right, we're going to be here like an hour, 15 minutes. It is what it is. So it is I was, I said, all right, I'm going to go in and just get them to bring someone else out. So I, I walked in. I had a little bit of um, Yosemite Sam about me, but not as much as you did. But I did, <laughs> <laughs> I did kind of go, I'm going to tell them what I think. <laughs> I'm going to tell these people how I feel. Um, and I walked in. It was funny. When I walked in, it looked like, um, I don't know. It looked like they just they were a bunch of school kids that had just been uh, yelled at by the principal because it seemed like the workers weren't uh, the real workers in there. Like they were just the temp workers or something. And I'm like, oh, these people already look terrified. They're obviously having a bad time. And um, I said, you got to get someone else out to man the booth. They've gone, we just rang the manager. He's on his way to do it. Like they were terrified. And then yeah. I looked around where the van was of the people that you just got all new york on and um the van i'm not kidding the van was had one wheel up on the on the curb of the of the in front of the hertz rent car all of the doors were open like the van's uh back doors were full open the front doors were open and just left open and i looked and um the the guy driving the car was pushing uh, his elderly father in a wheelchair and the woman who was in the back had all the luggage and they were sprinting towards the terminal. And I, I, I don't know what they were doing, but it looked like they uh, had just come in from, I don't know, overseas perhaps. And, and the first instance they had in America was Jim Brewer getting New York on him in the parking lot. <laughs> And they're like, oh, let's just go back. We don't need this. <laughs> I just went and flew on. <laughs> but I thought about it later and I <laughs> suspect that they just said, oh, we, we'll go and get a taxi. We don't need this. But <laughs> I swear that it looked like a the, it looked like a bank robbery after you leave the getaway car. Like it was just it was just left. <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, and again, I'm not proud of it. Uh, and then we went to, then we went to a batting cage like, the next day. And as we were leaving, one of my friends was going the other way, and then the car behind him started beeping at him. And again, I just, I was like, shut the fuck, shut the fuck, you this and that, shut the fuck. I'm like, oh my God, what is, I gotta get out of here. Why, I, I thought it I must just be ingrained in you to when you get back in and you smell those old smells and stuff and your brain just goes, oh, that's right, you snap. Because that guy in the car went, um, outside the batting cages did the same thing. He pulled up and just immediately just went, ah, 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 and you went, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just there going, yeah, I think yeah, it's just awesome. like, oh, 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 barking at oh. each other. Two wild dogs. Oh, 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 <laughs> we were crap. Oh, it was great. Um, I think it's great. It reminds me of kind of the mentality in Australia because people don't let people get away with things. They'll go, oh, you know, call people out, yell at them, swear at them, stuff like that. But uh, they're also the same people that will immediately in a bar or something go, hey, do you want a drink to a random stranger? It's a very, it's on one hand and it's, hey, we're all friends here. So it's, it's just an interesting. 
It is a it's a great it's a great dynamic, and I feel like we've lost a lot of that. And uh, maybe we can bring it back somehow. We don't need the violent part. Maybe we just stay loud and barking. But it's it just is what it is. Overall, though, um, you felt good about those sets. We had a good time. We had a good time in in Long that, Island. Those were that that might have been the best uh, weekend of comedy I think I've ever had. Like so much fun and laughs, and yeah. you know, we just. Uh, that room is incredible. The Paramount. You kidding me? Come on. I started talking like yeah. you guys. It was fun. Um, <laughs> the sets were great and uh, and the food was incredible. And the that Kevin at the Paramount was awesome. All the staff were great. It was just a really that's what uh that's the fun weekends of comedy. The other ones where you're stuck in, I don't know, Dayton, Ohio in a shitty comedy. Uh, condo and you buy yourself and stuff you're like all right I, I do this but sometimes you get to do the real fun ones when there's a group of comedians and we all gel together and we play bocce and <laughs> you know just fun stuff <laughs> i forgot about that <laughs> well i had a great weekend with you and i hope uh, i'll have the footage done soon i filmed everyone uh from what i understand it came out really good and um i just and i just i'm glad you're around and uh we'll catch up we'll catch up sooner or later i hope the movie's doing all right i know for people that don't know Monty wrote a movie um i could talk about it or no sure yeah we're filming next year we're actually going to film some parts later this year so uh it's you know it's been in the works for a while as movies do it stems from one of my stand-up jokes and um I wrote it with Rob Schneider and John Cleese and uh, we're filming next year in Australia. We got Jim Jeffries in it, Reese Darby. And uh, it's going to be exciting. It's, I'm starring in this thing. It's the first, uh, <laughs> first thing I've done and I'm starring in this like $15 million movie. So, well, that's awesome. That's a huge budget too. That's a big budget for a film, especially if it's your first one. Uh, yeah. It's your well, first one. That's huge. Because I wrote it and, um, and I'm, you know, the creator and stuff like that, we can get a lot of the funding from the government in Australia because they incentivize to bring uh, productions to uh, our country, obviously. So, um, oh. and it's because it's in a regional part of Australia, you get this incentive from the, the federal and then the state and then yep. the region that you're in. So there's all these little... Uh, helpful ways to make that budget that sound it's 15 million Australian too. So that's just 75 us dollars, which is achievable. And um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a, uh, yeah, but it's, um, you know, it's pretty exciting and it's going to be a lot of fun. Good. Well, I hope it turns out, man, we'll keep in touch. Thanks for hopping on board. Always. Monty, Thanks man. everyone. Monty Franklin, everyone. Make sure you follow him on all his socials and all that. Monty Franklin. Yeah. Get on there. Come on. Come on. All right. Have a good one, Monty. Bye-bye. There, I got this uh, video from Sib. I guess his take on what happened. Joe likes to talk. How long is this? Uh, I don't believe it's that long. I think it's like two minutes. Let me hear what Joe says. Let me all hear what right. Joe says. There we go. Joe's entertaining. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> This is what happened. <laughs> we all flew into Newark Airport. Monty, Brewer, and myself. I'm coming from California, Monty's coming from LA, uh, and Jim's coming up from Florida. What the problem was though, you gotta remember this, everyone's flight day that day was a nightmare. My flight got canceled, I had to book a new flight, Monty got stuck on a flight, Brewer came up from uh, Florida, and I think got another flight mixed up. But the bottom line was when we all landed at Newark, Something was going on where no one could get to their gate. So we sat on our plane. I sat on my plane for two and a half hours. Monty sat on his for like almost three hours. Brewer was on his plane for two hours. We were texting each other. So the time, by the time we get to Hertz to get the car, because yep. Brewer always rents at Hertz, yep. um, he was already like, we were hungry, we were bummed. So we get in the car, we kind of like, all right, let's get out of here. But I don't know what was going on with Hertz. There's like 30 cars trying to leave and we're in a standstill, one guy, one guy checking everyone out. And at this point, Brewer's cool. You know, we're joking around, typical, starting the trip. But then this van cuts in front of everybody <laughs> and tries to <laughs> tries just to blow the line. And Brewer wasn't having it, man. And I, I, you know, I've seen him get bummed, but I've never seen him, like he got bummed and he went over and just gave a talking to. <laughs> and I don't know what he said, but 
I was kind of watching from the back and Monty got out to like find out why there was only one guy working there. So now I'm just sitting in the van by myself or in our car by herself. And all I remember is the van that Jim talked to about cutting in front of line. They just backed up and started going against traffic and they were like, we're out of here. So I don't know. He wasn't feeling it. All right. That's my version of the story, man. Exactly what went down. Oh my God.